man who has taken time to holistically give himself to the word of God has not proved it that it works. The word of God cannot fail because this is the absoluteness of his power. An open invitation to a life in the word. Because you have received the faith of Christ and you have embraced the righteousness of God through faith. Grace and peace are multiplied. That is why we lay hands on the lame and they walk. We lay hands on the blind and they see. We lay hands on the deaf and they hear. It's powerful enough to give you the answer on its first application. Arise on the wings of revelation. Align your destiny. Transform your world. This is Fenero Make Manifest with Apostle Grace Lubega. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Can I hear a big amen than that? Hallelujah. If you're excited to be in the house of God, can you make a big shout? Okay. If you're excited again to be in the house of God, can you make a bigger shout than that? How many of you are excited again to be in the house of God? You're here, you know it's not by mistake. You know God is up to something with your life. Amen. And those of you who are watching us from wherever you are, we would like to welcome you to today's service. God bless you so, so much. And if you know there's anyone that should be joining you, that should be tuned into this broadcast tonight, please, I'd like to request you to send them those links and let them know service has begun god is up to something today in jesus name amen amen those of you here would you mind to just take up your to stand up on your feet and let us begin our service with the word of prayer hallelujah and i know you know every time you come early and tune in early for service it's a sign that you want to pray amen hallelujah Hallelujah. It's a sign that you want to what? To pray. Can I read you a scripture? Can I read you a scripture? The Bible says in the book of Galatians chapter 4 and verse 4. It says, but when the fullness of the time was come. Is it projected on your screen? Can we read it together? One, two, three, go. But when the fullness of the time was come. God sent forth his son made of a woman under the law praise the lord the bible says when the fullness of time was come god sent forth his son made of a woman born of a woman every time you come here this is the fullness of time do you understand me the fullness of time means there are things that god has ordained and spoken concerning your life but when the season of their maturation and manifestation was come, he sent forth the son. He says, but this son was made of a woman. And so every Thursday you come here, I want you to know that this is the fullness of time. When you, wherever you're coming from, wherever you're tuning in from, I want you to know that today as you tune in, every promise that God spoke or son in your life, today is the fullness of the time when they must manifest. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. But the Bible says that even when the fullness of time was come, he sent forth his, to send forth his son, he needed a woman. And the woman there signifies a womb. That means that if God has spoken something concerning your life, you need a womb for the manifestation of the same. And the Bible says that when you travail, you bring forth. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So right now as you pray, you are preparing yourself to bath that which has come in the fullness of time. You're not passing time. Tell your neighbor, I am not going to pass time. I am positioning myself. I'm conditioning my spirit. I'm preparing my heart to bring forth that which God has spoken and has come in the fullness of its time. Hallelujah. So now, like a man expectant, a woman expectant, one that is carrying something that nations desire to see that you are about to bring forth, I want you to open up your mouth like a woman uh, with pangs, like somebody that is about, you know, about to bring forth.
usually in those moments you don't care you don't you, the women don't want to know what is happening around them at that time they are carrying a destiny and a life that must come forth in jesus mighty name now just lift up your voice lift up your voice and and worship him and bring forth and bring forth that which god has spoken concerning you this is the fullness of the time this is the fullness of the time and also as you prepare yourself for what is also going to load you with spiritual wombs are designed that they can bring forth every day every hour every minute every second they are not so limited to the cycles of the natural wombs and so tonight you can present and prepare yourself through your prayer to bring forth things can I hear a voice as of one that is pregnant with destiny? That is, the fullness of time has come upon you. Reba shata kapa, manta kapa sele bakata la bakombra ta. Le pa shata kapa ya la basata kapa. Reba santa kapa se teke pala ta. Se teke pala. Reba santa kapa santa ka. The hour is come, ma se teke. Le pa son reba santa kapa ya. And the season is now, ma shata. Rebe se teke para kata. Masha takapa la basa takaya ba, mandele ba sonta kapa, sherep kata kapa la raba sota, masha kere ba santa kabaya, masha takapa la raba sata ka, raba shete kapa la kata la basata, o shekele ba kata la basonta ya la ba, le pa shata kapa raba sata kaba, le pa shata kaba la basonde kapa la taya. The Bible says that by faith we understand that the world were framed by the word of God. Begin to frame your world, child of God. With the word of God that is blessed in your spirit. He has given you the grace to design your life. He has given you the power to design your worlds in the name of Jesus. Shire deketa, ma shente ke para sota, reba katara ba shata kapala la ba sonte ke ba ya, raba shata kapala katere ba sota, o shente ke para kata, reba sonde ke ba sata, le pa shanta, riba konsi te ke le ba sota ya, ma shente ke para kata ya. Maleba sonte ke pa sekete, o shikele ba sota. And the material that designs your world, he has said concerning the same that that word is near you. Ma shikete ke le pa sente ke pa la rebe sekete ke ba sota ya. Ma sente ke pa la taka reba sonte ke pa suta ya. Your life cannot remain the same again. Reba sukete ke pa la ta. Ma sonto ko pa la. You can design your family. You can design your ministry. 
You can design the course of your children. You can design the course of your destiny in the name of Jesus. He said that this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate therein and day that she may observe to do all that is written therein. And he says, when you observe that, your way shall be prosperous in the name of Jesus. Oh, you cannot fail, child of God. You have the material for your destiny. You have the material to construct and to form your destiny in the name of Jesus. Oh, Santa Capa, Lepa Sonto Copaya, Racapa Site Kepa, Rekesekete Leba Sonta, Lacos Ketepa. He said, You shall not be anxious for anything, you shall not worry concerning anything, you shall not be troubled about anything because He has given you the material for constructing your life in the name of Jesus. Oh, Sheteke, Ma Santa Capaya, Child of God, speak. Whatsoever you shall establish or stand in the earth shall be established in the heavens. Oskata, manta kapaya sota, rekete kepa sota, mande kepa sota la, yala basota kapaya. Oh, sete kepa ya taka, rekete le basota, maskata la baya, le pa konte kepa ya, zipe ya kata kata ya. Oh, sota kapaya ta. Masheteke le pas kota ya mile koskete reketeke pasuta masketeka are you carrying something mashantaka are you pregnant this seven masheteke le pekete kata reketeke basuta manta kapaya you are in the right place oh shata yele baseke re bashantaka manta kapaya ele konto koske rabasuta ya masheteke paya oketa ya Masuta, Rementes Kibarando, Ashkatalamanda, Mashetekepa, Manto Kopala, Liposkate, Lekataya Masuta, Mashatabaya, Eyabakota, Misotopola. You have the material in the name of Jesus. Your course is defined in the name of Jesus. Your tomorrow is defined in the name of Jesus. Your family is defined. Your ministry is defined in Jesus' mighty name. And the Spirit of the living God, He draws you here tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Man to to give you a blueprint of how your destiny must look like. And He invites you to a partnership. He calls you to a partnership. He calls you to a partnership. He calls you to a fellowship. Makatekepe, lekes konto preta, ike masanda rabasota, balako simele basanta, mashata kapata, getos kepele nete, rako simeta, balako zeteke, zipres ketele masota, manta kapa le basota, zipele ketele basuta, manta kapa yata. Oh, shekele masata, mashanta kapa, sekele basonta ka. Your God is great, mighty in battle, 
Mashata kapa Sinekete Mashekele basota Lepakata kapa Child of God you're not alone Mashikele basata Rekete kepa sata You are not alone Keba santa Mande kepa sata kapaya He's with you Mashata kapa He abides with you Ie basom prekete Rekete pa You are not praying alone The Bible says he quickens you That she may call on his name He quickens you Mashata kapaya Lepe sekete Rebe son takapaya Raba son teke and that is your confidence that is your assurance that you are not alone he is with you the lord god almighty the bible says he goes ahead of you Le preke teke basota, reke basoto koba ya, le pasanta kapa. The Bible says he cuts asunder, manda kapa ya. The bars of iron, he goes ahead of you. He's with you, mashete kapa. You don't stand alone. He's with you, mashete kapa. The Bible says here in His grace you stand, manta kapa. Le pasete ke, mashata kapa ya. You come by grace. Oke tele basota. Reke ma santa kapa Ma sente ke palara basota And the Bible says that by grace The great mountains are brought down Ma shike tele ba Ma neke basuta Reke basente le ba ya O shata pala kata Eke basonte ke pala Rike yara basonte le basata O shike le basonte Shipre koste ke ba Ma taka paya kote You are not alone Rike basente ke ba ya he gave you his word, it is the material. He gave you his grace, wherein you stand. He gave you his And the Bible says he goes before you like a mighty man. Mashanta kabaya leke sekete amashete reke basuta reba sete ke palata ramason te ke baya he goes ahead of you like a mighty man mashanta ka he goes forth before you like a mighty man mashanta kabaya o sete ke palana masanta like a preke sete mashanta kaba le pa kon sikete Mandara bako sata, mashete kepa. Oh hallelujah, zikiri abasanta. Rabako shete kepa, leke pa sonte ke. Mashaka rabasota, rikele abasanta, leka basente. He stars jealousy concerning your life as a man of war. He makes you an envy of many generations. Eke pa sata, likele basuta, mashete te. The spirit of God makes your life envy. He makes your ministry enviable. He makes your family enviable. The call of God on your life enviable. In the name of Jesus. Oh, shete kepaya. Ma site keleba santa. There's nothing that God will do in your life that will be small. In the name of Jesus. Your life. What the Lord will do in your life, what God does in your life, it will bring kings to the brightness of your light. In the name of Jesus, it will bring princes and kings to the brightness of your rising in the name of Jesus it is no mean work and the sons of strangers shall build your walls the men who not know, know shall serve you in the name of Jesus, sheke teke pa, makos ke tele basota, rika ba ya sombre teke, shipre ke sele bakota, raka ba sondele basota, o shipre ke tele ba ya, makata kapa kasete, shire ke reba kata, masata kapa, 
Le pasol toko prayer. Likereba sokoro bo 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 ziata. Sheke teke payala. Oh se teke pa. Oh sheke teke pala. Mas teke pa. Baroko teke liba sota. Mas teke he. Likaraba sote. Shiprekete ne basota. Rekebele kete. Mashanta kabaya. Likerebo suta. Mas teke pa. Le paka sete, rika la makota, masata kapa, zike le makote, reka ya masombrata, ilegebo usanta. Le keskete, jiprekete, le kabakota, masiketeke, like masota, he makes you ahead over the heathen. In the name of Jesus, eke pashata, reka masuta, masanta kapaya, leke pashata, rika ya masota ka, shepre tekea, manda katokotika, like parakoteke, leka basanta, the fullness of time is come, masente kaya, yaka paya sota, and he has given you a womb, in the name of Jesus, to bath that which he has promised, concerning the fullness of time, masente kaya, Yeke tele basota, ile baba baba suya, jepe yakata, mashata kapa, mashete kepaya, okora basata, mashete kepaya, oski tele basota, yeya baba baba konde le basa, mashata kapa ya la basote, mashata kapa ya rekonte ke. Kilia masumbre dike, eke vos kata, ishkite vos kilimanda, arakon steke, rike teke vos kataya, shelemanda ki androska, maso praviga, ele kasto sivanda, esketaya manda, maso tope, iabaka sata, shelele bonta, kente kepa, masitoka, malekete yabakuta, e shipera, manto kote, rekastu afrakije, ele kepa sata, mante e ijo. Ile ma suta, ele keste, iva dos kini manda, ma suta kapaya, ele ma suta, ma suta pa, iya ma suta, ma suteke, ma la ma kuta, zipele kata, ma suta pa, o suteke pa ya, ma suteke. Masekete leba ha, likende kosta, iba kasuta, leke pa suta, masokata, leke pa, masiteke leba, elebo suta, masokata ba, rakateke para, marekete lebo site, pakala ba suta, zepeketa, rakasuta, manta kapa, leke teke pa suta, leke sekete leba suta, ria kosteke, the le kosteke, the Lord God is strong and mighty and mighty. Mashikete, makata ya bakota, repesite, mashata kabayaba, oh silemanda, oh sata kabala. Mashata kaba, rakonte kepa, lepas konte, gaskite leba, mashubrianta, ekendos kete. Masukepa lekonse rekonte the fullness of time is come oh sipa rekete masataka lepasata the fullness of time is come masukete konte kepa ziprekete kosani that which he promised esikele ba konta masete kepa leke masota ziprekete rikaya masombreteke lika masukombrete masukanda rakunde le basa lekande kabosa I see a redemption of years a redemption of generations in the name of Jesus masipata mande konte kepaya leposkita masike ya bakunta Legente, the Bible says the word of God is that which quickens. Mashike, the candebo silekata, leposkete, the spirit of the living God quickens you. He makes you so light. Ke pasuka, rikente, like basuda, makata kapaya, he carries every burden. Like sike, masanta kapa, he lightens you up. He kele basikaya, he gives you speed. Masanta kapa, makunda la basuta. Lepa ande koshi yakata, rekente kepa, lipa suka, mante kepa, 
Lebo, Seleketa, Likem Brecota, Kiteke Lebosa, Lekento Kosha. He ushers you into your day of rest in the name of Jesus. Ma Seteke, Mankom Takapa, Likebo Sata, Lepaku Selemana, Shekendebo Salabida, Rakos Tekepa, Ma Setekepa. Your day of rest is come. Your day of rest is come. Your day of rest is come. Ma shata leke bara sanda. Your day of rest is come. Ma shata kaba. Ma shaga talaba. She preke tere bago shata. Reke basanta kawaya. Reka baba babo she preke te. Ma soko preke talaba, manta kaba yalabo si preke ta. Shelege ba sonta, rakata kaya ba konta kaba. Your day of rest is come, ma shata. Ba katala ba ko sete kepa ya, leka shata kepa ya, leke ba sete kepa, leke sete kepa ya ko sete, leka sote kepa ya. Man take a pasukaragada. He gives you an address. Shike pelekete. Reke masoko toko pokasita. He gives you a voice. Shiteke. Man take a payakata. Mashe take a pakata. He defines your calling. Mashata. Oke telima ko se take a paya. He sets you a pakesh keta. Man deke prekos ke teleba sata. Rikayamando se take a paya. He sets you apart, Keshata. Balekos teke preshitaya. Rike elama so prekete. Leke pasukataya. That you are not common, shiketaya. Man teke pala so teke. Leke masu teke paya. Mashe teke paka sata. That there is nothing before. Shike teke paya kata. And any that is to come that ever shall be like you. Shike kataya. Man shika toko prekete. Leke manda ba supre ketaya, oh please katene ma supre kete. Leke ndi ba shikata la ba shata. The wisdom of God upon your life defines you. Leke shete ke pa ya shata, man te ke pre kete lega ba shata. Leke ndo shete pre kiska, reke ndo ba shata, ma shata ka pa ya la ba shata. His wisdom upon your life defines you. Sipe. Rike ma Santa Kabaya, oh Shete ke pelekete, Lipa Santa Kabaya, oh Saka ya ba 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 Shata, ma Shata kapa, baraka takapa, Rike seke teleba, Lipa seke te, seke prenta kabaya, Lipa ba sombre kete, ma Santa kaba, Lipa Shata, Zepa taka, Lipa ba Santa. Mashete ke paya, like zikete, he will serve you. Mashata kapa, o zikete, like mashata kapa, like mashata, like mashata kapa, like mashakata, mashaka rabasata, lepa ko mashata kapa ya, mandele ke prekoste, zipreke tele mashuta, mashete ke leba, like mashata, mashakata. Zike lebe kete, lika ba santa, ma se kete leba shota, o karaba kata ya, se pre kete leba ya, ma karaba kongsete, ma shota kapa ya, ma se kete leba santa, leke pre kongs kita laba. The Lord gathered everyone that was driven out in the name of Jesus. Ma she can take every single son in you. That was driven out, he gathers, he gathers, he gathers. Masha takabaya, reke teke pasota, leke pason takaba. Masha ke teke ya, he gathers everything that was driven out. He gathers. Oh, she peke te, reke paya kataya, masha teke paya kata, rabako se ke te le basota. Barreka taka paya sota, mashente ke paya, makata ya pa, o sipele ke taya ba 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 ba. He gathers, he gathers everything, mashente ke paya, lipe se ke te, lika ndaba shompreta, lika baraba shuta kabaya, 
Mashaketeleba Sota, Manta Kapa Sombreta, Liga Basurebeleba Sota, Mandreketeleba Sota Kaba, O Shayababa Bakuta, Manto Koyboze, Ileba Suteke Payagara, Rado Sibelebo Sota, Mashata Kapaya, Ribebebe Kota Rababa Baya Sota, O Shata, Lepeketelegaba, Masota Kabayaloza. Makashata kapa, like pa santa, le pa santa, raba santa ka, reketele bo santa, makandratos kete, le pa santa, reketele ba santa, rebo shikete, mashata kapa ya, le ke ba santa la ba ya, le ke tele ba sote kele ba, mashuka la ba ya da, he gathers, he gathers, he gathers, konte kapa ya, he brings back to you. His word concerning your life is not vain. Mashanta Kapa Shakatalaba Satalaba. Barrago Santa Cabana Rabasso Teke de Maya Shiketele Basota Shuta Cabana Basote Recava Sute Keleva Sota Cabaya Reco Takaba Santa Cabaya Roco Takabaya Lava Sota Cabaya Shilekeleva Soko Retecate Kayanda ba soto kuba, likara ba kote kuba sata kabaya, sata kabaka ta, rekonste ke ba sata la baya, likara ba sata kaya ba sota, sheke te ke ba rakon sata kabaya, rika sote ke ba raba sata, mashaka ta la ba konte re basia. Ricando preskete ba supre kata, riakos kata la ba supre ti la ba suta la ba ya, mashaka da ba kumbre des kata, rakuta kaba ya sokete li ba kuta, rekande shete peka, rakata zikumbra dia, la dozi eke fraliga sada, ele konta kaba ya shete ke para ba sata, mashaka ta, bokanta kaba kusata. Like ba shanda rabaya, rakusta ka, radikas kumbredika, palakonde kesketi baya. God, we are ready for what you're gonna do tonight. Ba shaka raba sika, leko zipreketi ba shanta kaba, rika ba sombrete kete le ba shata, rakanta kaba sombrete, rika mbo sata kapaya. Once again, make us overflow. Rika nyama shota ba, lepa kasa taka paya. Rike sekete le ba konta, mashanta kaba sekete. Once again we run over, shika ba ya. Rekete ba saka taka ba, more than enough, shike ba rakata. Rekete ke ba shota kapa ya, masike te ke ba raba sota. Rika ba sote ke pa ya. Your blessing upon us to a thousand generations. Rika ya ba shota kaba. Mashata kapa ya kata, mashike teke para kunta. Rika ya ba shata kapa, mashike teke para. Lepa shike teke ba ya sata, manta kapa seke teke ba ya. Mashata kaba ya kunta kaba. Seke te, lika ba sombre teke pa ya kata, mara kaba shata kapa. Lipaka Santa Kapa Sata, Mashete Kepara Kata, Legaba Sikon Rekete, Shiprekete Leba Kuta Rabaya, Keleba Santa Kaba, Rika Pa Santa Kapa Seteke, Masota Kapa Zakata Raba, Lika Sike Lebo Sikata, Mashata Kapa, Mante Kepara Kosata Raba, Lepa Sekete Kepaya, Moshata Kapa. Masata kapa, masike teke paya. His mercy to a thousand generations. 
Mashike paya kata, mashike teke paya sota, reke teke pashika ya, mashike teke pasata, mashike te. Your children and children's children will experience His mercy to a thousand generations. Mashike teke paya, rika zanta kapa seteke. Oshelege basata, leka zanta kabaya. Shike reba santa kaba, lika zete keba santa kaba ya. Santa kaba la basata, lika baso brekete. Raka santa kaba ya la basota, lika baso kete keba raba ya. Oh zipa takaba, raka santa kaba ya la basata. O sheke teke para ka santa kabaya shakaraba sombra kata rikaraba shata kabari da costa lekaba sapra kata la mashanta baya bomta kaba seke pradika shata rikamba seke le bashanda rabaya likaraba shekombre kila basunta kabaya leba kondra kaba shanta kabaya the Bible says in the book of Zephaniah chapter 3 and verse 14, it says, Sing, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel, be glad and rejoice with all the heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. It says, The Lord has taken away thy judgments. He has cast out thy enemies. The King of Israel, even the Lord, is in the midst of thee. You shall not see evil again. It says, You will not see evil again. In verse 16 he says and in that day it shall be said to jerusalem fear not it shall be said concerning you fear not and do and to zion let thine hands be slack he says the lord thy god in the midst of thee is mighty he says he will save you he will rejoice over you with joy he will rest in his love he says he will joy over thee with singing then he says he will gather everything he will gather them that are sorrowful for the Solomon assembly, who are of thee to whom the reproach of it was a burden. And in verse 19, it says, Behold, at a time, at that time, I will undo all the affliction. It says, During that time, he will do all the affliction. He will undo all that afflict thee, and he will save you that halteth. It says, And he will gather her that was driven out anything concerning you that was taken away he says you will gather it again concerning you he says and you will get them praise and fame in every land where they have not been where they've been put to shame hallelujah give god a mighty hand of of praise as you're praying that that's what was happening hallelujah praise the lord he says he will take away all your affliction and says that he will bring, he will give, he will get them praise and fame in every land. He will give you praise and shame. Where you failed, where there was, you know, a bad report, he says he will give you fame and praise in Jesus' mighty name. And that's why you've come today, because he's going to do that tonight in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Give God a mighty hand clap of praise and let us all come to the choir. so much Pastor Rohi. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Beloved of God, let's rise up and praise our God. Oromosaiko 
kwe waiwa Nandi bate wa e bianke nandi bivuli dani Singa si kwe mukwano Gumala, gumala Guno mukwano gonga gumala Jesus, I'm grateful for this. Jesus, I'm grateful for the gift of divine health. Jesus, I'm grateful for your provision. Jesus, I'm grateful. Makata yana bose ketele baya. Ayene bosha tele bala kala la da da la. Oh yana bose te kaba.
promotes you. Nobody. Hey. Nobody. Who can question the lion of Judah?
Somebody lift your voice to God. Oh, shala desi telele de bo shala la la. Rata baka ya da ba sata. Oh Jesus, libro ko ya tagaba ya telege bo sa. Raso le broko la te. Raso pakata ka ya baka. Rakata ka bako si lege tele. Robo ko tolo robo ko shata. Lion of Judah, we worship you in this place. Makatele brosa takatalaba. Great I am, maseke teleba. The great Jehovah, masele broko tokoba. Mashatele broko taka. Mashelelele silele kalaba. Mashele kalaba dosala. Jehovah shalom, masata. Rekete roboko shanda na baba.
the congregation say you are my
for your love Where would we be without your love? Now I give a day I sing a day I jagada Hey, la bocha, ta la 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 ba ko la da da La ko shanda la ko zene brakata Hey, ya sa ta ya la 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 Hey, la lo sa da 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 la Oh, sa ya ka la ba ya te le ga ba da ba ya Thank you, Jesus.
and glorify the name of Jesus. It's rather to be glorified, it's rather to be exalted. Come on, just worship him. Give him the glory and honor that he deserves. He is a good God, he's a good God, he's a good God. Let's sit up, Prada Galabazite Posa. Leproso Bracala Labaradi. Sitte sekete poko zokra di garabaradi, mandara broko zokota pradi garabaradi zalita la kataba, shene bro zokra katala baradi mozuta kati kalapa, le bro zola pra katala baradi diri, shene broko zokra tida baradi gazayalaba, sitte poko zaga di garabradi ka, rakata ra brako baradi gezete. Somebody lift your voice to Jesus. He deserves the glory. He deserves your worship. He deserves your praise. He has given you life. He has kept you. He has been there for you. He is the only one. The Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He is the only God that is able. To do exceedingly abundantly above all you can imagine, oh, even us. That is the God you are worshiping, that is the God you are glorifying. If you know the one that you are praising tonight, He is that God that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can speak, above all that you can ask, above all that you can imagine. Lesi katala broko bradi gara baradesa. Lesi le boko bra katala la la bosa. Lesi le ba katala barade bos. Oh, we worship you. We bless you, God. Si te kete po tala barade. Manta karadi kete po zala barade. Oh, radi kari da zite po zakara barade. Somebody lift your voice and speak to your maker. 
Lift your voice and speak to the King of Kings. Let suta para de gora para bosa. Let sine para da gara bosa prakataya. We are grateful, oh God. Oh, we are grateful, oh God. We are grateful, oh God, that your masses are new every morning. That your masses are new every morning. Yesterday is gone. Today is a new day. In the name of Jesus, we want to thank you, Lord, that you daily loads us with benefits. That even tonight, oh God, oh Radikaza Parade Gozaba. Great things are happening in our midst. In the name of Jesus. Healing is happening, oh God. Deliverance is happening, oh God. We've been aligned, oh God. Inheritance is being revealed. In the name of Jesus. 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 Promotions, oh God, of glory. La Pakata La Broco Pradi. We thank you for invasions. The glory and honor of the name of Jesus. We thank you for children. We thank you for marriages. We thank you, Lord, of glory for ministry. Le Kota Parade Bosa, Brada Galade. La Bakara Brose Paraba. The benefits that you tell us as with. The benefits of your presence. The benefit of the anointing. In the mighty name of Jesus. La Bro Kota La Bakala Desa. La Bakara de Bosa, La Barade. Li Santa Kati Karida Garabosa. Li Tora Barani Garidesa. Le Sota Bakara Broko. Ri Bari de Zitari de Garado. Shakata Kanti Keleboda. Ra Bro Ri Bari de Gazita. Bo Salida Kanta Late. Li de Goda Prota Laba. It is beautiful to know you. That as it declared in your word. Eh, that in your presence. There is fullness of joy. And at your right hand. They are precious forevermore. Oh, we are grateful to be in your presence. That great and mighty things are happening in our lives in the name of Jesus. We worship you, Lord. La parade goes the brata. Somebody be excited in the presence of God. Because great things are happening. Something's about to happen to your life in the name of Jesus. God did not give you that grace to come in his presence. Oh, Radika Parade Bosa, and is not able to do something new, and is not able to take you to another glory, and is not able to take you where he wants you to go, and is not able to reveal to you. Le Katala Broko, Ibarade, Mantara de Gazipa, everything that you need to know. You are not here accidentally. No, the grace of God led you here. The presence of God carried you here. God Almighty brought you in his presence. La parade goes a parade because there is something that he wants to accomplish in your life. There is a level where he needs to take you. There is a place that he wants you to reach in the name of Jesus. There is something he wants to do in your life tonight. Don't miss it out. Be expectant. Be excited like one that is ready to receive something. Be excited like one that knows that is about to happen. Be excited like one that knows that is going back home free. It's 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 going back home free. In the name of Jesus, that you not look at that problem any other day. In the name of Jesus, oh, be expectant like one that is determining and is saying tonight is my night. Today is my day. Today is my day. I'm not going back home the same. I know there is something for me here. I know there is something for me here. I know, I know, I know. To the glory and honor of the name of Jesus. Oh, we worship you, Lord. We worship Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Wali we chise chirondola Tine wana Tukuvobu towa Kono kumbula be Chise chirondola Chichitanga nyera kupa 
Jesus' name. Come on, turn to five people and greet them. Welcome those five people and tell them, welcome in the presence of God, where the grace of God is visible, where the grace of God is manifesting, where the power of God is working, where the angels of God are at work, oh, in the name of Jesus. Let's give a hand clap to the choirs. They go down to see the most wonderful choir, beautiful choir. Thank you, choir. Thank you, choir. God bless you. I believe you greeted those five people. Are they doing well? Are they lovely? Come on, are they lovely? Ask them, how are you doing? What is the answer? What are they saying? Are they okay? Are they good? Just tell them you're in the right place. In the presence of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Tell them something is about to happen. You cannot go back home the same. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, allow me to make this a few announcements, and then we'll get out of here to the glory and horn of the name of Jesus. I'm excited. I can't wait what our man of God has for us. Apostle Grace will love you. Hallelujah. I can't wait what our Father has for us today. Amen. If it's your first time to be here, we want to welcome you in a special way. Is it your first time to be here? We want you to stand up wherever you are. We want to give you something. We want to welcome you. We want to love on you. Wherever you are, can you stand up? Yeah, we have visitors here. You are welcome. You are welcome. You are welcome to the most beautiful fellowship in the world. Come on, the usher has something for you. Great. Make sure you get something from the usher. If they've not given it to you, tell your neighbor to tell the usher to give you that something because we need to, you know, to, to, to see to it that you, you are comfortable. Please, that seat has been prepared for you by our man of God, Apostle Grace Lubega, our father, and you are welcome. So if you want to come back next Thursday, come back and tell, if you find anyone there, tell them that is my seat. Hallelujah. If they disturb you, call me, I'll come. In Jesus' name. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes, we are delighted to see you and we are glad to have you in the presence of God. Uh, if you need to have information concerning our 
our Phenomenal Ministries International. We have a table behind there. We have a table just at the, uh, down as you go down the other side. We have tents there and there are tables there. We have information uh, uh, concerning our manifest, our manifest fellowship, partnering with us, marriage, submission to the ministry, or if you want to dedicate your child and many more and any other thing that you need to know about the ministry. Or you can ask an usher. They can lead you to that table to show you where you can get such information. Praise the name of the Lord. Somebody say UK Prayer and Revival Conference. From conference. Come on, Prayer and Revival Conference. Okay. On the 2nd of September, our Father Apostle Grace will be in London for a Prayer and Revival Conference. The venue is City Gates Conference. If you are clapping, please clap. Ah. Amina, thank you. <laughs> the Venue City Gates Conference uh, Center, uh, that is Ilford. Uh, that's where we're going to be. And we encourage you to invite your friends, family, workmates, schoolmates, neighbors, ETC, uh, to this life-changing event. And if you're traveling from Uganda uh, or, or from another country to this event, please register uh, with our global mission team on plus 256 200 triple nine uh, four one five. I believe the number is on the screen and uh, you're able to note it down so that you can be able to register. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes, we also want to make sure that we, uh, we, we do what we call the residential mobilization. As a ministry, we have uh, uh, exponentially grown and our presence in the communities continue to rapidly grow every day. You should clap for God about that. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. So, to enhance our impact in the communities, we have established a team to register those who would like to be involved. Ask your neighbor, would you like to be involved? Ask your neighbor whether they would like to be involved so that I can tell them what uh, I need to tell them. Hallelujah. Okay. Yes. Uh, we want to do activities at the residential levels and we have designed cards for this purpose which you can feel in every uh, uh, on every Thursday and Sunday at the information table. Again, if you don't know where the information table is, ask an usher. They will lead you there. The ushers have badge. They have a, a card or a badge that will help you. It's written on usher. They will help you to take you to the table. Thank you so much. For this registration exercise, we have started with Kampara Metropolitan area and then will gradually expand to other locations. Say Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, we have uh, great news uh, concerning the Fanero app. And uh, how many of us have the Fanero app on your phone, on your gadget somewhere? Come and put up that hand. Yes. Okay. Uh, for, you, for those that do not have the app, we would like also to, uh, to remind you that we have this app. It's available, it's free, both on Apple Store and, Grob, and, uh, and, Google, and, and Google Play. Uh, the final app is loaded with uh, life transforming content, including other devotion, summons, worship, uh, compilation, and many more other things that are very, very important and good for you. Uh, through the app, you can also watch Manifest TV. Yeah. Uh, give to support the works of the gospel and submit your prayer request. Isn't that beautiful? It's beautiful. Amen. And I would like also to give you some general uh, security guidance. We kind of request that you do not leave any personal items such as phones, uh, bags, gadgets, etc. unattended to. If you might have misplaced an item, ask one of our ushers or security persons to direct you to the lost item tent and as you depart the grounds after service uh, for your respective homes we also recommend your vigilance praise the name of the lord okay somebody say giving yeah we want to thank god for your giving and you should clap for yourself for your giving to the glory and honor of the name of jesus a man of god always tells us that our giving is increasing every now and then we thank god for that hallelujah so we appreciate your diligent and generous giving for the work of the gospel and encourage you to use our online platforms 
which are the funnel up the, our back accounts our website and mobile money that is both mtn and airtel when you give please we request that you indicate the reason for giving for example if you're giving for tithe give tithe partnership first fruit etc praise the name of the lord okay allow me to uh to call the videos the video team can you please send us the videos thank previously in Fenero. I want to answer the question of why, even though we are carriers of the Holy Spirit, we are not set for the examples that should be emulated in the world, in our workplaces, in our careers, in our giftings, in our credentials, in our qualifications, in our homes, wherever we are. So fundamentally, there's that question of if we are carriers of this person, of the Holy Spirit, why aren't we living as the heads and not the tail wherever we are? Why aren't we living as the most influential people wherever we have been placed in life? Why isn't that light shining? Why isn't that star burning? Why aren't we at the forefront of everything God is doing, of every invention, every idea, every innovation, every new thing coming on the earth? Why aren't Christians on the forefront? Having the Holy Spirit means that you're ready and able to function more than anybody who doesn't have the person of the Holy Spirit. In fact, we're supposed to be that light. This Holy Spirit is more than just speaking in tongues. The Holy Spirit is more than just feeling good and falling in your chair. The Holy Spirit is more than just feeling like crying. No, He's more than that. He is wisdom and understanding. The Bible says in Ezekiel 36, let's read verses 26. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. Listen, I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. Verses 27. And I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you shall keep my judgments and do them, and you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and you shall be my people, and I will be your God. What does it mean, and you shall dwell in the land which I gave you? In other words, you shall be able to take charge of where I appointed you to dwell. Because it's possible to appoint you to dwell somewhere, but you're not gonna take charge, nor subdue. But he says here, you shall dwell. In other words, you'll have the power to take charge. Why? Because in 27, he will put his spirit within you and cause you to walk in his statutes. The word here for statutes is the Hebrew word called choke. Choke means appointments. I will cause you to walk in my appointments. And what appointments? Time. Is one fundamental realm. It's fourth dimension. He says, number one, because you have my spirit in you, I will tune you to my timings. When you walk this journey of your business, this journey of your job, this journey of your career, this journey of your marriage, this journey of your ministry, there are appointed times and milestones that I have planted on your destiny to align you and spin you to the next level. When you reach those moments, my spirit will cause you to seize your moments, to arrest your experiences, to know when you have to fast, to know when you have to pray, to know when you have to draw back, to know when you have to lean in, to know when you have to sow, to know when you have to submit, to know when you have to yield to pacify offense, to know when you have to fight like a lion, to know when to be humble as a dove, to know when to be cunning, to know when to stand, to know when to believe, to know when to overcome, to know when you to turn the ear and refuse to listen to certain things, to know who to talk to, who to relate to. Come on! He talks about space. It's a dimension of appointments. He has designed the boundaries of habitation. Where you should be and at what time matters it with heaven. You're not everywhere at every time. When you start understanding the service of God, you realize that the steps of a righteous man are all that of the Lord. Your spaces are designed with a certain blueprint of heaven. Where you will dwell when is important. Oh, I must go to America. Are you going there as a slave or you're going there on purpose? All things work together for the good, for them that love the Lord, comma, and are called according to his purpose. Being out of divine purpose is a very painful thing. You must understand God and how he works. Your blessing on the earth is stuck to some sort of pattern. You might not know it, you might appreciate it, you might not appreciate it, 
but there is always something that God has need to connect you are yes your business passion but if you had the wisdom and grace to see by the eyes of the spirit you would see that there are people whom God has connected you and by those people he has connected other people and by those people he has connected other people and without that chain the blessing of the Lord is not complete so you'd expect that because God has showed Moses a pattern he's going to come on the earth and simply manifest the pattern God has shown him to build but then he says, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, and the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, and I have filled him with the Spirit of God, in wisdom, and in understanding, and in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship, to devise cunning works, to work in gold, and in silver, and in brass, and in cutting of stones, to set them and in the carving of timber to work in all manner of workmanship. And behold, I've given him Aholiab, the son of Ahishamak, of the tribe of Dan, and in the hearts of all that are wise-hearted, I have put wisdom that they may make all that I've commanded thee. The tabernacle of the congregation, that's one of the things they're supposed to do. The ark of the testimony, the masses sit that is thereupon, and all the furniture of the tabernacle, and the table of his furniture, the pure candlestick with all his furniture, and the altar of incense, the altar of burnt offering with all his furniture, the lover and his foot, and the clothes of service, the holy garments of Aaron the priest, the garments of his sons to minister in the priest's office, and the anointing oil, the sweet incense of a holy place, according to all that I've commanded thee, they shall do. He's telling Moses, I've given you a pattern, but I've given you men who carry the wisdom to create the pattern I have showed thee. And he's saying among them is a man called Basil. I anointed that man with all wisdom and all manner of skill. When he works with gold and in silver and in brass, that man doesn't work by the simple artistry of a human being. And he tells Moses, you don't have that ability, even though I've given you the pattern. And this is the funny thing. Much as Bezalel has all the art in the world, he cannot create without Moses' pattern. He cannot build what would please God for him to say, this is the candlestick I want. Because it has to come firstly through the spirit of Moses to carry the language and give it to the heart of an interpreter who is able to read from the language of Moses and designed by the power of the Holy Spirit what God will say, this is the candlestick that Moses saw. There will always be a person God has given the grace to do beyond what your ability is, but yet it's from the pattern God has revealed to you. This is what God is telling us. All of these men behind Bezalel are all interpreting things by the Holy Spirit. Moses has to tell Bezalel what he saw and Bezalel has to receive it and by the Holy Spirit design it the way it should be. And God says the Holy Spirit does that too. Do you know there are certain people that God has ordained to build for you and there are people God has ordained for you to design and that's okay because even Moses wasn't building for himself. He was building for the Lord. It's a pattern, it's a cycle, I, I don't know how to call that, but it always goes upward and upward and upward and upward and upward. But you must find yourself designed for that segment that God has ordained you for and be a part of what God is doing. Because if you're not in that equation, you cannot be a success. So man says, but the Lord told me that if I do this, this will happen. Why isn't it happened? Are you patterned? Oh, the Lord told me that if I do this, I'll see success here. Are you patterned when you study this individual? No pattern can qualify them even for what God gave them. Did God give it to them? Yes. Did God promise? Yes. But there was a pattern to tell Moses that you'll build a tabernacle. It's not enough for Moses to build a tabernacle. There is a pattern for Moses to build a tabernacle. That's what I'm trying to tell you. This is how the spirit world works. I will make you the richest man in the world. There is a wisdom that is applied on that person. There is a certain understanding that they carry. There's a certain eye that is supposed to have to a detail that other people are not able to understand because there is an anointing on him that can judge things beyond what other people are able to judge. And it goes back to the pattern God showed you. 
There are some who by the grace of God have both the pattern and carry the wisdom to execute. There are men whom God has given that grace. There are men whom God, yes, has given the pattern but might not be able to execute and will need others to help execute in some areas. But they still know how to direct those who are executing for them. There are instances where your eye will be required to remind them of the pattern because their gifting is not enough. And all of this is by the Spirit. Everything on the earth has a pattern. Business people, there is a pattern to your business. Oh, I'm struggling because you're not patterned. My business is struggling. Yes, if I just sit down with you and we start having a conversation, I can tell you where the problem is. There are places you've not had the Holy Spirit. So we have to use and work with what God has given us through the person of the Holy Spirit. To go beyond speaking in tongues and, you know, casting out devils and all of that is special. But hey, God has called us to be the heads and not the tail. To be the salt on the earth, the light of the world. So I know there's an engineer here who is just not an engineer. They are the best engineer designed for the earth, but they don't have a pattern. The Holy Spirit, they have not worked with enough to know how to build the right skill the right wisdom, the right people to work with to interpret what he cannot interpret to become the most successful engineer the world has ever seen. Because they don't see the Holy Spirit that way. When I understood that, whether I'm doing my own personal business, there, there is a principle. I must follow some patterns for certain things. There are th places I will wait, there are places I will rush, there are places I'll hold back, there are places I'll give him, there are places that whatever thing I do, I must hear him. And I've learned when you follow the pattern, everything you will do will be a success. Everything you do will be a success. He says, I will cause you to walk in my appointments, to walk in my measures, to walk in my tasks, to walk in the portions I've designed and alluded for you. The spirit realm has a blueprint by the person of the Holy Spirit. Everything you will build on the earth to carry its form and manifest it, you need the original print. You need to follow a certain diagram and heaven has given it through the person of the Holy Spirit. Relate with him that way. Join our online family, spread the love and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Fenero, make manifest. Praise the name of the Lord. Come on, give a hand clap. Give a hand clap to the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. Tell neighbor, you need the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit. There's a blueprint for everything in this life. Hallelujah. Amen. I want us to go through the devotion this day. A man of God, Apostle Grace, make sure that every morning, every day of our life, we have a devotion. We wake up in the morning expectant to receive. Hallelujah. So I want us to go through the devotion. I believe that some of you were able to go through it. But let us uh, also go through it and uh, continue to receive that the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to us. Uh, that is for now devotion, Thursday, 17th August, 2023, by our man of God, Apostle Grace Dubega. We are reading from the book of Luke, chapter 18, verses 1. The Bible says, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray. Tell neighbor, men ought always to pray. Hallelujah. And the Bible says when you pray, you do not what? Faint. Isn't that powerful? That is beautiful. So the title of our devotion today is that men ought to always pray. One of the greatest attacks on any Christian is and will always be their prayer life. The devil knows what the fervent effectual prayer of a righteous man can do. So as such, you always devise means to frustrate your prayer, frustrate your prayer life. How then can you prevail, child of God? It's a question. What is the secret to consistent prayer? It's another question here. In the book of Zechariah chapter 12, verses 10, the Bible says, And I will pour upon the house of David 
and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplication. When he speaks of the spirit of grace and supplication, it means that it means that consistent prayer is a grace because it is not possible in your own what? Strength. So if you understand that you cannot pray every day except by the grace of God, this is the starting point of a disciplined prayer life. Say amen. Once you embrace this grace, it will help you pray through the moments of fatigue. When you feel too tired to pray, it will cause you to pray when the frustrations of life knocks at your door and you feel too downcast to pray. Say hallelujah. Amen. Our, God, our Father studies will have Zachariah uh, chapter 12 verses 10 and 1 Corinthians 15 10. Our God and nugget consistent prayer is a grace because it is not possible in your own strength. Can we pray together? You can lift up your hand or put it in your chest and pray after me. Say, my father, I thank you for this knowledge. Thank you for your spirit in me. It is he who causes me to pray and intercede no matter the current circumstances of my life. I embrace the grace that is always available for me to seek your face. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. May God bless. Let's welcome the word. Come on, let's raise our hands and worship God. Let's thank him for this week, this evening, this season, this year. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let us, let, let's worship the Lord Jesus. Let's worship the Lord Jesus. Let's worship the Lord Jesus. Jesus never gathers men and, done nothing, and does nothing. Even tonight we believe he's going to do something. As in the Bible said that exceedingly abundantly above that which we dare to ask or think according to the working power that works in us. Let's 
raise our voice and sing it louder. Ah, yes.
hearts and speak to Jesus. Bible says, Blessed are they that hunger and thirst, for they shall be filled. Reko sembra na gose getele pororo kasare reko zira bazalata. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open unto thee. Reko sembra na gose getele kete. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Mesora na gose getele pa. For it is the will of the Father to give you the kingdom. Esole bra ragada. It's the will of the Father to give you the realm. It's the will of the Father. Rekasola balande gozi gatalaba, eko sherere boranda gozi geleta. Bible says if we ask according to His will, then we know that He heareth us. And if we know that He heareth us, the Bible says that we shall have the petitions for which we ask. Hey, ayarando brare gazola gotelepa, kosambara le gazoba gatala, robo gozi derebala. The Bible says here, in is the Father glorified, that you may bear much fruit. The Bible says, wait on the Lord. In other words, pray. And he shall strengthen your heart. 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 The Bible says that the ear of the Lord is inclined to the righteous. It's inclined to the righteous. It's inclined to the righteous. Whatever you're asking for, believe that you receive it this evening. Believe that you receive it this evening. Believe that you receive it today. Ereka sombra de gazogata, reke sele para de gazombre de go, masore gazanda katala, mera kozobo kozakata, eyala ko bararalaba, masom para de gazo, reke shikata la barare, zora kozanda kata, masala kotele pararo, zegetele ma. The Bible says men ought to always pray and not to faint. Eyaro kozando kota, masala kotele bada. Zoga talaman tore brada, zoko talapa koshepa, zieleke teke shamba. Something is moving. Something is moving. 
Something is changing. Rokosi alabara, rokose kete, rakata alabara de, rokosa. Eya rokosi barada, zekere rebo sharaba, zoko rakose brada, zoko tele kete, zobre rego si katala, maso brade gazom katala, maso pere rega, zoya rama zombra de gaso, eselehe kopa yokanda, mela kopa dega, zoya kotele ke. The Bible says that the fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much power, dynamic in nature. He called it the heartfelt, the heartfelt, the heartfelt continuous prayer. In other words, you have to pray from your heart, not from your mind. Mando ze barakata, soko palakata, reka zombra de gazo, mesoro kosakata, e yarara kosele. God is healing the sick. God is healing the sick. God is healing the sick. Reko zembra ragote, sakata lakote, mampara de gazo brada. Zoko para de proroko, mason para ti gazo. Eya la kota kapa, eya rando bridi gazo, eya roko shikata. You are in the presence of the Most High God. Eko rando zibra da gazegete, mason para de gazo pata la gata. Zaka ya laba, reko shente le para de, roko bre de gazibra da gata. Zekele kete, eya sombra de gazo, reka som pata la, reko zibra de. So brada go zembra da gata, reko si katalapa, reko zembra da gaso, e yalanto ko zabada, e yoko si kata, mesoro ko zembra, raka sakata, reko zembra raga, zolo pokoto, manto parada, so brada reka zombata, e rika zombra dega, so reka zomboto, e yere ko santa, masora raba, reka zombre dego, masombo do kota. Eya rako shetele, masonte kia, mazo barada, reko shetele, mazon pakotia, meko tolobo, maso rogoza, zaka talala, reka patalabo, eza yako, eshemprare, zomba de gashora, soka talapa, reko ziyaralaba, zoro bozi gatalapa, reko shimbra de gaso, eya rara bongo ziya, masanda lakate. Yele kete le kete, mashon pata la kata, rako se le kete, rako se barado, roko se kele, rango te le ka, rako rababa, rako se mbato logo, masan pata la ka, e yele kete le pa, zore ka zambrade, zoko te le katoba, manta la parade, roko se le kete, mazambo ko shele, e zi ala kote pa, I believe that God answers prayer. And that is answering prayer right now. He's answering your prayer right now. He's answering your prayer right now. I want you to celebrate God like He has answered. Celebrate God like He has answered. Tell him, Father, we thank you because you've answered our prayer. In Jesus' name, give him a mighty noble praise. As you take your seats, choir, thank you very much. Thank you, Lord. Tell me, how was your week? Uh-huh. I'll ask all the people standing in the back to get your seats, please. With the exception of the ushers and the security, we pray that everybody takes their seat. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 Allow me to bless our offerings this evening. And then I want to go straight into the wine. Is that okay? Heavenly Father, I want to thank you. The generosity of your people. We worship you in our giving this evening. I'm persuaded that you'll supply all our needs 
according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And all saints said, Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Allow me to go straight into the word. As some of you or many of you know who have been following this ministry for many years, I've had this conviction in my spirit to emphasize many or several things concerning prayer. Because much as we pray and make our requests known to God, it also came to my understanding early when the Lord Jesus Christ started to teach me how to pray. See, when the disciples come to Jesus and say, teach us how to pray, it's because they understood the importance of prayer. And the reason why some people in the world have answered prayer and some don't is this very reason, that we don't know or understand the principles that govern effective prayer. Over the years, I have built a compendium. It's called Prayer Chords. About 10 or 9 or 12, something like that. If you go on the mobile app, uh, app you can find them. If you're interested in, 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 in listening to them, it's about 9 to 12 sermons. I would recommend you listen to them because when the Bible says we pray and receive not because we pray amiss, it means that, you see, you can spend 20 hours in prayer, 15 hours in prayer, 30 hours in prayer, and still not receive because you did not pray the right way. And I know many Christians out there who spend nights and days without the revelation and understanding of what prayer is and how to pray. And I've seen some go on mountains and spend Years there, months and weeks. Have, not that there's a problem on going to the mountain, but there's a problem if you're going to a mountain without the revelation of prayer. I saw some get on flights and pay expensive tickets to go on a wall in Israel to wail. <laughs> One time I flew to Tel Aviv and I went to that wall. For the first time I said, God, what's the revelation of this wall? Not that I'd not studied or understood the history of that war, but everybody was there. Even people who didn't believe in Jesus, actually the biggest number of people which were on that wall did not believe in the Messiah. They believed in Judaism. And the Judistic philosophy does not define the Messiah the way we understand him in scripture. The one they are waiting for is a political figure. They don't believe that there was a Jesus who walked the surface of this earth, died and was raised for our glory. Certain things started going to my spirit and I'm not saying that it is wrong to go if you want to. Sometimes God will answer according to your faith. But the most definitive altar is in the inside of your spirit. The most consecrated altar is in the inside of your spirit. If you have not learned that secret, you'll never be effective in prayer. Because prayer begins with intimacy. To have a relationship with God, not the artifact. It's not enough to have a relationship with a certain wall. To have a relationship with a certain tree. To have a relationship with a certain mountain. God is not in that mountain. The Bible says, this is the mystery that was hid from the ages past. And now revealed Christ in us, the hope of glory. Somebody said, Christ is in me. Hallelujah. It's a great revelation. So if I isolate, because I love being alone, it's only because I want, I don't want any disturbing noises, but not because the place that I isolate to is necessarily more consecrated than the altar in the inside of my spirit. Somebody shout amen. So I began a journey of trying to open this understanding to as many as gave me their ear. Because let me tell you something. When you learn to pray the right way, you will see the results. You will see the results of prayer. God is true. 
what the word of God says is true. God is not a liar. He's not a man that he should lie. But we don't know how to pray. We're not positioned right. We're not oriented right. We're not given the right understanding in prayer. Today is one of those days I'm going to give you a very fundamental pillar in prayer. Shout hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 16 verses 12. Isaiah chapter 16 verses 12. Very powerful, very powerful revelation. First time I landed on it in scripture, I wanted to explode. Seriously, I did. The Bible says it shall come to pass when it is seen that Moab is weary on the high place that he shall come to his sanctuary to pray, but he shall not prevail. It shall come to pass when it is seen that Moab is weary, Moab is tired on the high place that he shall come to his sanctuary to pray, but he shall not prevail. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. He shall not prevail. If you read the Amplified, it shall be that when Moab presents himself, when he raises himself worshipping on the high place of idolatry, he'll come to his sanctuary of Chemosh, God of Moab, but he will not prevail. Then he will be ashamed of his God. I hope by now we all know, or many of us know, that high places are altars. They're places of worship. Certain places were ordained even by the children of Israel, not only pagan uh, kingdoms, but even the children of Israel had places where they wished to go and, you know, give sacrifice for their God. First Kings chapter 3 verses 2, only the people sacrificed in high places because there was no house built unto the name of the Lord and, in, until those days. So it was not only done by pagan kingdoms, but the children of Israel were doing that. In fact, the pagan kingdoms copied the children of Israel and built themselves sanctuaries or place, sorry, altars in, pla in high places, what they called high places. So they used to worship in high places. When you talk about high places, or if you ever read in scripture and, 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 and come in contact with something called high places, they're talking about altars. Now, why is Moab weary? Because he is praying to an idol. Why is Moab weary in the high place? Because he is speaking to a small God. And therein the revelation started to build in my spirit. Right there the spirit of the Lord told me something very powerful. Very powerful. That I want to tell you and then build my case through. And this is what he said. He said, son, many of my people have not understood that my altar is an altar of rest. Not an altar of war. Not an altar of struggle. Not an altar of strife. He said to me, when you are weary, don't come. First minister to the weariness and then come on the altar. Ah! But you see, the Bible says, come to me all you who are heavy laden. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Come unto me all who, ye who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest, he says. He says, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. And the Lord told me that was not spoken to believers. That was people which were coming from the world. All my life I used to think this portion of scripture, Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, was for a believer. God has not anointed our altars to carry weary men. And I'll explain why. Just give me time. Give me your ears. Read this. He says, come unto me all ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you what? And I'll give you rest. Next verse. Take my yoke upon you. So these are people who have not yet received the yoke of Christ. And learn of me, for I'm meek and low in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. These were people that were carrying another burden, not the person of Christ. 
So that portion of scripture is right for a man who doesn't know God. They, they have to be wary. When, when you're sacrificing on, on a pagan altar, you will be wary. Somebody shout amen. amen. If you're sacrificing on, on a fallen altar, you have to get wary. If you're indifferent to the pattern God has designed in prayer, you will get tired. Have you asked yourself why some people struggle to pray? Because they don't have a revelation of how they're supposed to pray or stand or be positioned on the altar. Do you know how many people cannot sustain a 10-minute prayer? When they pray for 10 minutes, they grow weary. When they pray for 15 minutes, they grow weary. When they pray for 30 minutes, they grow weary. And there are people who can pray for one hour, two hours, three hours, and they can work, even pray the whole day and not feel the inconvenience or discomfort of prayer because in their strength is coming. They have an understanding as they approach the throne of grace. But there are people who, many, many Christians, in fact, one of the biggest attacks in the body of Christ is prayer. If it was for show of hands and I said, how many people here pray for at least an hour a day? I'll tell you, 10 or 5% would put up their hands. It would even be less, probably 2 or 3%. The rest of you, it's 10, 15 minutes, 3 minutes. Jesus. <laughs> Father, in the name of the Father. <laughs> Are you following what I'm saying? They can't, we can't sustain prayer. When we get into the place of prayer, we're weary. Why? Because we were not shown this mystery. It was not revealed to us. We never understood this wisdom. The place of prayer for a believer is not supposed to be a place for the weary. Because like Moab, when you come weary, you will not prevail. You will not prevail. Prayer is supposed to be a place of rest, not struggle and strife. But you see, uh, weapons of our warfare uh, uh, are not carnal since John. Or since the kingdom of God has suffered violence and the violent take it by force. You don't need to come out of rest to be violent. Combra de gazota. Hosanda copra legado. You don't have to come out of a place of rest to be violent. Let me explain this further. Hebrews 4.23. He says, For unto us was the gospel preached. Chapter 4 verses 2. Sorry. 2, 3. He says, For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that had it. So he gives us a group of people which, you know, applied the word, but they did not mix it with faith, even though they had the word. Okay? And because there was no faith in them, in whatever word they had, for... We, he, so he says, for we which have believed, now he's, he's, he's giving us a juxtaposition. He's helping us give a, di, uh, he's separating for us. Paul is helping us understand the difference between a believer and, and people who don't believe. He said, the people who received the word, but when they received it, they did not mix it with faith. But he said, but we which believed have entered into rest. In other words, they stayed restless because there was no faith in them. They came on the altar of prayer with anxiety. And if you come anxious, you will get weary. If you come without faith, you will become tired. That is how you know that you have not yet grown in faith. You will struggle in prayer. Because it's not a place of rest. He says, we which have believed do enter into rest. He didn't say we which are believing, present continuous. He says, we which have believed, past participle. Right? Have entered into what? Rest. We which have believed, believed, have entered into what? Rest. We which have believed, I'll repeat it until it sinks in your soft skull. We which have believed have entered into rest. You know what? Faith is a place of rest. That's why I said you don't need to, 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 to come out of rest to be violent. You can be in rest yet violent. Spiritually. Yet aggressive toward hell and the devil. 
Are you following what I'm saying? Yeah. See, now I'm redefining so much because there are people who are restless in the spirit and it even shows in their prayer life. Even in the way they pray. By the time the person comes out of prayer, he says, I'm from prayer. I'm from prayer. I'm from prayer. We are more than conquerors. No. <laughs> Did the Bible say that they that wait on the Lord are supposed to renew their strength? That means in prayer, if, if you're praying the right way, if you're praying in rest, Eh, 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 eh. Come on. If you're praying in rest, it means the longer you pray, the stronger you are. Come on, those the, the, the longer you pray, the stronger you become. You come out of a four, six, seven hour prayer, and then they say, How are you? And say, I'm fine. Why? Because you're invigorated by the Holy Ghost. We which have believed have entered into rest. So you come in a place of rest. Not in a place of war. You don't begin this. You remember Solomon? Let's go to the place where God has a conversation with David. David says, how? How can I sleep in the house of Seda? And the presence of my God is in curtains. You remember? I want to build you a house, he says. Okay. But God tells David, you cannot build me a house. You can't consecrate an altar for me. Why? Because you're surrounded with too much war. He says, a seed shall come out of you. And he says, and he shall be a son of rest. I will give him peace. And by him, I shall build the altar. He has to give peace to the seed of Solomon. And so to the seed of David, which is Solomon. He has to get a man of rest and a man of peace. And when he does that, then he can build the altar. First King chapter 5 verses 3. Solomon says, Thou knowest how that David my father could not build an house unto the name of the Lord his God for the wars which were about him on every side until the Lord put them under the soles of his feet. My father David could not build a house for the Lord because he was of restless spirit. He was a man of war. There was always something to catch his attention and draw him out of the rest that he needed to consecrate an altar for my God. He says, verses 4, but now the Lord God has given me Come on, answer me. The Lord God has given me rest on every side so that there is neither adversary nor evil or current. And behold, I purpose to build an house unto the name of the Lord my God as the Lord spoke unto David my father saying, Thy son whom I will set upon thy throne in thy room, he shall build an house for my name. He says, now that I've found rest, I have the qualification to build the altar. David bought all that was needed. In fact, he passed most of that stuff to Solomon. But there was still more needed. It was not just the money or the wealth or the gold necessary to build an altar. God wanted a man under rest to consecrate an altar. You're not going to change that pattern. Oh, I wish you got it. I wish you got it. You're not going to change that pattern next week. You're not going to change that pattern for as long as the earth remains. God has appointed places, altars, of rest as effective realms for prayer. You must enter rest first. When you enter rest, then you pray. Then you pray. We enter rest, you enter the place of prayer with strength. And we come into places of rest whilst we pray. That's just how God has patterned life. Remember Isaiah chapter 40 verses 31. That famous scripture many people read. It says, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Uh -huh. They shall mount up with wings as he goes. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. 
They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not what? Faint. Now, many, many people don't see that there's a pattern there. Again, like I said, the gospel, the message is a pattern. There's a pattern there. They are waiting upon the Lord. They begin from a place of flight in strength and then from flight they run and then from running they walk. Then from walking, what happens? They land. You understand? Okay? If, if this portion of scripture say, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, they shall walk and not faint, they shall run and not grow weary, they shall mount up on wings as he goes, it would mean they would start prayer, prayer would begin from you know, rest, walking, running, and then what? You see how, how, how airplanes take off. From stop, they start to do, 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 slow, 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 and then they go on the runway. And then they hit their speed and go in the air. Isn't it? Because you need some speed to go in the air, to fly. Isn't it? But this one is from the air to running, to walking. That, this, this was a landing man coming into rest. <laughs> Hey, who understood what I just said? Flying and then running and then walking and then coming to a stop. And that's how they renew their strength. But some of you, you begin from but you see, the revelation, oh, there are two people praying. One is Makaba, but they're in rest. And in other ones, but they're out of rest. <laughs> then they say, that sister prays, but she doesn't have results. She goes to church every day. That is why one of the things that shocks me most as a minister is when you find somebody in a, in a, in a war, in a war, they're like, Makodo, Zekete, Koshala, Rokodara, Makada, violence, fire. And then there's a ninja somewhere in the corner. He's just saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> hmm. That promotion is coming. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and then you 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 look at them for some time, and you find that the screaming brother is looking for rent. The fellow who is praying a bit silent, things are working for him. I'm not saying there's a problem with you screaming. I'm only saying there are people who are screaming without revelation. And I feel sorry for you. If you have both, then you're lucky. You're blessed. Because your scream will come with results. But there's nothing painful like wearing out your throat. You come back and say, we were praying the whole night. And then they examine you months and weeks, nothing changes. Prayer is not about how you pray. But it's in the revelation that God has given us for prayer. Sometimes I have those moments where I want to pray under my breath. In fact, many a times at night because I don't want to wake up my house, I have wisdom enough. You know, there are some of you, even your neighbors have a problem with you. You know, some of you, you need wisdom. Somebody told me, oh, my neighbors, they don't want me in the neighborhood, pray for me, Apostle Grace. They say I'm screaming for them. Of course, heaven won't back you up because you don't have wisdom. No, I can pray for an hour or two without my wife. Why should I wake up because I'm praying? No, I can't. Pray. But I'm, I'm shaking heaven. Praise God. And then I also have my moments where I feel like it has to come out. Oh, there are times I feel like I, I just have to isolate and, and because there are certain things you, hey, hey, you know, there's Kando Bradega Zokatala. Who has understood what I'm saying? There are those days sometimes where you want to express yourself. There are times where there's some noises that are too loud in your head and you want to silence them. You want to overlap them and you separate yourself in wisdom and start to pack candles. Agala, loka badega, ro candles abadega to, kantala bade. But I have to make sure I'm not disturbing any man's rest. So it's okay. And if you have not had that moment, it will come. One day where you'll find yourself screaming, kashonda balade. 
a thought comes in your head and says, no, in Jesus' name, I can't die. Then you, you come back to normal. The businesswoman that you are. Who is understand what I'm saying? Because there are some things, they come so aggressively and you don't have time to say, I refuse. Okay, if I'm in, if I'm in a plane, I say, I refuse in Jesus' name. I can't so. But even in that, it's like, I can't so. I can't. I feel like you're strong the door. Fire! And then there are those times you're free. And then you find yourself screaming, Fire! <laughs> Somebody has a vuvuzela. But yours, for that one, for you, I've noticed you, for you, yours is always loud. It's never silent. I think your, your neighbors have a problem with you. <laughs> ah, there's another one there down as well. Pray for Fanero. Ah, a whistle. You see? <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus. Of course heaven will have noise. So if you're not comfortable with noise, I feel sorry for you. Because in heaven we are going to be praising. Not like... No. In heaven we are going to be praising. There will be trumpets. There will be pipes. So better get used to heavenly praise. But I'm just trying to give us some understanding because some Christians are not okay. You know what I mean? You're in a board meeting and then they hear you just saying, standing. <laughs> it's sister, sister Theopista, are you okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. A Christian enters an interview. They are going to interview them and they start saying, I plead the blood of Jesus uh, over my head. I, I enter the, the jurisdiction heaven has given me. I, I, I'm going to pass this interview in Jesus' name. Amen. Guys are like, even Jesus is like, Christianity is not designed to be strange. We can be out of our minds, but we don't lose the wisdom. You know, there are Christians I call, they keep them guessing. People who do strange things, they just keep you guessing. You don't know what they are going to do. Somebody can get excited and climb that light. Oh. Ah, no. No, 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 no. Some are demons. <laughs> <laughs> Tell your neighbor, I've entered into rest. I've entered into rest. Kenda Brade Gazoga Talaba. I've entered into rest. It's a very fundamental thing. So then you ask the question How does that work? How does this rest? work. Let me explain it for you. Let me take some time and help you understand it in the simplest language I can. Remember the scripture said, we which have believed have entered into rest. In other words, it's not a believing, it's a believed thing. It has to begin with the understanding of the word of God in what God has done through Christ. Praise the Lord. It might not be eminently manifested in your life, but that doesn't mean that God has not already done that in Christ. You must first understand what has God done already in Christ. Let me give you an example. What has God done in Christ concerning your health? The Bible tells us that he bore our sicknesses and carried our pains. The Bible says that he whose own self bore our sins on the cross, that we being dead unto sins, should live unto righteousness and by his stripes were healed. That is what God has done by Christ. So that means by heaven, your healing has already been provided for. 
Then you go to the doctor and the doctor gives you very sad news and says your kidneys are not working. Yes, your kidneys are not working. And that will hit an adrenaline of shock. Anxiety will hit you. Stress. Your brain will wake up to something that, that you can't explain. All the chemicals in your brain are going to change. Because they're telling you your kidneys are failing or have failed. It's bad news to hear. Or we suspect that what you're dealing with is a cancer and it's in its stage, this. That will take you out of rest. That's why it's called disease, disease. Anything that takes a man out of rest is the sickness itself, not what's in the body. Are you following what I'm saying? Who got it? Somebody said, I got it. <laughs> Somebody said it. They said, I got it. Now, listen. You tell a Christian, first rest. First pull yourself together. Don't start by, oh Jesus, me, why me? No, 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 don't start like that. First pull yourself together. For me, even if it means first taking a nap, if I pray, I first, let me first sleep a bit. Because I need me rested, spirit, soul, and body. Now, to enter the life of prayer, you don't enter like, oh God, what have I done? Why me? That's restlessness. That's anxiety. He says, be anxious about nothing. Don't come to me with anxiety. But in all things, with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your request. Why thanksgiving? Because you have the revelation of what God has done in Christ. And this is the revelation that by his stripes you were healed. And because you know that by his stripes you were healed, you're not going to go to the presence of God to ask for healing. You're going to go with thanksgiving because you were healed. And now you're going to communicate to your body in the prayer to agree with what God has already done by Christ. You see? You see? So yes, the news comes. You first come down and pull yourself together. You speak in tongues. The Bible says he that speaks in tongues builds himself up. So when you speak in tongues, you build yourself. Shanta braragado. You're trying to calm yourself down. You're resting in your spirit. You're resting in your spirit. Before you enter the place of deep prayer to address this issue. By the time you're addressing it, you're not addressing or you should not be addressing it in a place of anxiety. Because if anxiety is there, it only means you have not yet understood what God has done by Christ. So here the problem is understanding. It's not the sickness. You see? Here the problem is understanding. Not what the doctor said. They're human beings too. They also have an end. If a doctor can tell you, here there is nothing we can do in science, that means they're limited. They're limited. So you can't put your faith in only what they've studied. We, we have doctors who are Christians. Even they know it. That there's a point where as a doctor, you have to speak in tongues and say, Heavenly Father, give me something that my books can't. Are you following what I'm saying? That's what makes a good doctor. Because they'll, they'll, they'll find something. They'll find something. And perhaps, maybe you are just a healing machine. God just brought that person for you to lay hands on them. And then you find yourself praying for them. And they are healed. Because medicine wouldn't fix that. It's how we trained our Christian people to be. Be a doctor. But with an anointing and an understanding of the ways of the spirit. Somebody say amen. amen. Now you see. Somebody enters in prayer anxious. In fact I tell people for me when I'm anxious or I'm out of rest. I don't pray. I don't pray. I'll just look for some worship and put it on to rest my spirit first. Then when it's rested, 
I opened fire. Somebody shout hallelujah. And when you get into prayer with that attitude, you're not entering to try. You're going in it to win. Because you're simply claiming your right to divine health and telling the devil that because Jesus carried away or took away sickness from you, he has no right to put it on your body. That's where the war begins. Are you following what I'm saying? He bore a sickness and carried our pains. So he's saying, oh, it was taken. So that means the devil has no right to put on me what Jesus took away at the cross. Oh, so I'm healed. Yes. My body might not feel it yet, but I am healed. I was healed. You see what I'm saying? Then you enter the place of prayer with the rest that you're not believing God for healing, but you have believed. We which have believed do enter into rest. No, you're not believing God for breakthrough. You have believed that breakthrough is there. Then you enter the place of rest. You see, you'll find yourself with thanksgiving, making your requests. The thanksgiving will precede the request. The request will not precede the thanksgiving. You'll find yourself saying, Father, I thank you. Because you were wounded, Jesus. Jesus was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. I am free. I was healed. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And as you continue repeating these things to your spirit, something starts to wake the spirit manner and is stirred into a certain place. And the person who went there crying, you find yourself just dancing and singing. So what if things refuse to change and you feel worse the next day? That's where you know whether you really believed or you're believing or you are trying a formula without believing. You know that people who think you have to do this much for things to happen. No. The thing is you have to believe what has already been done by Christ and then appropriate it in prayer to manifestation. Otherwise then, you're working under the principle of the law. You're doing to receive instead of receiving to do. You see? That's the difference between faith and works. He says, without works, faith is dead. You understand? Without works, faith is dead. But one precedes the other. You have to believe first before the actions come. Isn't it? You can't do the actions first in order to believe. I have a sermon I'll preach soon. On that principle. Very simple but very powerful. David said, I had fainted if I had not believed to see. He didn't see to believe. He believed to see. Hey, I have a full sermon on that, I promise you. Put it in my book. I had fainted unless I had believed to see. Some people wait to fast, see, and then believe. Oh, I'm feeling better. That means I'm healed. Oh, the, the, there's no stomachache anymore. That means I'm healed. Oh, you're moving by the senses. Roman 8. If you live by the flesh, you'll surely die. Surely die. You're not a debtor to the flesh, the Bible says in Romans 8. You don't have a debt to the flesh to respond to how you feel to justify as of whether the miracle has taken place or not. So yes, maybe you pray and the pain still continues or the landlord is still on your case or you know, the job has, still, has not yet come. Yes, these are still symptoms, but the reality of what God has done is still intact. And then you see a believer who after long believing has not seen or applied themselves to faith after long has not seen the result of that faith and then they draw back to perdition. And then you hear them say, they go for a prayer uh, meeting and then they meet a man in, of God in secret. And then they say, man of God, pray for me. I'm believing God for healing. That very statement you've spoken means all the other things you've been doing for the five, six months, years are all useless. You've gone back to zero. You're repeating the cycle like you're starting from nothing. 
because you don't even carry the understanding. If you want somebody to carry this with you, you say, man of God, thank God with me because I was healed. Then the man of God lays hands on you. That's you continuing in the faith. Somebody says, I've prayed, I've fasted, I went to brother this one, I went to prophet this, sister so and so, evangelist so and so, and somebody came to me and they told me, now apostle, we've also come to try you. I told them, take the flight back. That, that flew in just to try me. I said, take your flight back. For me, I don't pray prayers of try. How do you come all the way just to come and try and see whether Apostle Grace's prayer will work? Eee, your ticket and hotel bills. It can't work because you're trying God. God is looking for people who are going in. It either works or it works. Somebody said amen. I said it either works or it works. Some time ago, a young man called me. 8 a.m. in the morning. For the grace. I need help. I said, how do I help you, sir? He said, I'm doing alcohol. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm tired of alcohol. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired of alcohol. I'm drinking. I'm drinking. I'm drinking. I'm drinking. I'm drinking. I'm drinking. So I said, can I get a pastor to help you? I can appoint one of our pastors to meet you and help you. In, the guy said, actually, right now I'm in a bar. So I said, I don't care where you are. 8 a.m. I want, he said, I want help. I said, I don't care where you are. Let me put you in touch of a pastor. He says, no, no, no. Don't waste your time. I told him, so what do you want from me? He says, just yeah, speak the word. Drunk boy, he said, just say that from today, you are not going to take alcohol. I pause and I'm going to be free. <laughs> I wanted to scream. Oh, I've screamed. Drunk, you guys, you just said the word. Say, you are, did you just say, you're not going to take alcohol again? And I said, in the name of Jesus, you're never going to take alcohol again. He says, it is done. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He says, bye. Like Jesus, I have not found so great faith. There's a man in a bar, confident that if I speak the word, and somebody takes a flight to come and try me, tell your neighbor, have some faith. <laughs> we which have believed do enter into rest. So you see that simple analogy? So it doesn't matter how bad, whether it's stage four or it's stage a million. Whether they tell you you have 24 hours to leave, find the rest. Find the rest. Find the rest because the altar that God has consecrated you is, a, is an altar of rest. Remove the pressure and stress and anxiety of your life. Don't pray shaking. You know how people, Jesus, I know. I, no, 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 no. Get your rest first. Get your rest first. I know there's a lot of trouble. I know you're at the verge of, you, it's, 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 it's coming for you. It, it, you can't stop it. The letter has been written. They must take you out tomorrow morning, but first rest. That's why I, mean, I tell people, if I'm overwhelmed, I, I first sleep a bit. Then I wake up. Then I go in the word. First get all my scriptures that I need. Mm, 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 mm. And then faith is built. When faith is built, oh, 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 my God. You enter the place of worship and prayer with joy. He has made me glad. Mando, Koraba, Zikala Kote. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not his benefits. He that forgiveth my sins and heals me of all my diseases. You, you enter, you enter like that with thanksgiving, knowing it must work. 
It might take a week. It might take a month. Maybe a few months. Maybe a year. Maybe a few years. I don't care. The point is, the end, the end must be of the Lord. Things might worsen in the middle. But I'm talking about that person who even as things are worsening, you still have your rest. Because as things worsen, people start becoming anxious for nothing. And then fear and anxiety grip them. And once fear and anxiety grip them, they're praying here, but they have unbelief here. They're praying here, but they don't believe that it's going to work here. They are confused. Even the confession is here, but it's not from their spirit. You understand what God has done by Christ. Apostle, I'm making 46. I'm making 46 and I'm not worried. I'm married. So what? So what? What the babies, Apostle? What about the babies? But I'm, it's, it's 46, Apostle, biology, 46, bi biology, biology, scripture, scripture, scripture. What does the word of God say? And then you see a woman hoping church to church, going apostle to apostle, prophet to prophet, teacher to teacher, pastor to pastor, evangelist to evangelist. And it's about the more she's moving, the more the web, the, it's like a cobweb, right? Like a spider. And they're like, they're like pray in a spider web, right? It just continues, you know, holding them and holding them to a point where they are too stuck. That's what happens to people who go hoping. They're hoping, they're hoping, they're hoping. They think that, oh, now I think, I think I need to fly to Congo. I heard there's a man of God. Then they go to Congo. Then from there, now I need to go north. Where? Libya. Oh, where? I think if I, if I don't go to Nigeria, I won't have an answer. Then they go. But the answer is here in the word. It's in their Bible. Are you following what I'm saying? Even those men you go to, if you don't come with faith, you're wasting time. You must come with faith. They that come to him must know that he is and that he is the reward of them that diligently seek him. There are people who come with so much faith. You know. You know. I'll never forget this young lady called Jennifer. During that time, Pastor Muyind and his wife were pastoring a church somewhere in Naguru. And I had gone to Mukono to preach that night and I was to come back and uh, preach in, in the church then they were pastoring. These university kids, you know, I have very crazy people here. They go in a hospital. They pick a girl who has heart disease. What else did she have? She had like four things. Heart disease, what else? Cancer. There were like four. Her disease, cancer, and something else. She, she was on the verge of death. They convinced the hospital, just give her to us. Mm. Even the doctors know the girl is going to what? Die. We need to take her for prayer. Can we hire an ambulance? Doctor said it's okay. They brought this girl in an ambulance of a hospital. Wee -woo, wee -woo, wee -woo. So when I come in, there's an ambulance outside. The girl is down on the floor. And as I get in, one of these guys say, Papa, this girl must walk. I said, this is fake. You know, they can provoke. Some people know how to provoke the anointing. Eh? Have you been around people who just know how to provoke the anointing? I just felt stirred in my spirit. She said, she must walk. She must heal. So I walked to this girl. She couldn't walk. I just stretch my hands. I say, in the name of Jesus, get up and walk. Jennifer ran out of the church. She stood up, felt strength. They started chasing after her. She's alive and well today. <clears throat> Cancer, heart disease, and two other diseases. HIVS. She's alive. 
alive. 100% healed by God. Eh, eh. People have faith. Now, I love that team because for them, they, they were not trying to accommodate. Nachibuka. Ashi Nachibuka. Nachibuka, they, these kids again, another group of kids are preaching here in Moobs. They go to Washin Mulago. They go to Mulago and pick Nachibuka. Nachibuka is stage four cancer. Nachibuka is HIV positive. So I'm preaching and I say little bed. There is like a little woman there. Small little thing. I thought it was a child. They brought Nachibuka. So I'm preaching, preaching. In fact, that day electricity went off. They bring this lady. Very small little thing. I thought she was a child. Very skinny. So when they put her on the floor to unwrap this thing. Hey, oh my God. The sight was unbearable. No hair on her head. I think Kimo had taken it. Very skinny to bone. She, she had lost all muscles. She had not walked over for nine or months or so more. Crippled. Nothing. These kids put Nachibuka there. Says I'm preaching the gospel. And I pray for Nachibuka. See, a girl stands up. Very skinny girl. I'm healed. I'm healed. Immediately she asked for food. I'm hungry. They fed Nachibuka. Three months later, this woman comes and she's healthy, very strong, no cancer, no HIV. Because they came by faith. You know, people say, I believe, but they don't believe. Some people have come, but they don't believe. They, they are believing, but they are not believing. Tell your neighbor, choose to believe God. Tell your neighbor, if you go for your answer, go for it. Are you following what I'm saying? God is looking for people who say, it has to work. I told you one day, I'll preach you until you walk on water. One day, I will preach faith, I will preach faith, but one day, you'll find yourself walking on water. You just keep listening. Somebody shout hallelujah. It has to work. Tell your neighbor it has to work. It has to work. You, you go in convinced that it has to work. Rested men are convinced. Rested men are Because you know it's going to work. It has to work. It must work. You know? Not, I must get married this year, but you're just telling here. No. They're people saying this year, when they mean it, they know it's this. Eh. They're not looking at, but the months have gone. But you know, it's the same. But no, no, eh, eh. I have a spiritual daughter here. You know those things where people confess things in their spirit. The man just woke up one day and told her we are getting married in a month. Hey, you're joking. Four weeks. They called me Apostle Grace. Crash program. In four weeks, the man says you must get married. I told her my suit is ready. You're joking. Spiritual warfare. We had believed for so long. The miracle is here, and I tell you now, wait. Ah, 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 ah. Chiguera, wow. Everything was done. First week, it was marriage. Hey, God can do exceedingly, abundantly, above that which you dare to. There are people you're looking at right now, but they're going to look different next week. They're going to look different in November. By December, you won't believe that they were seated next to you on a Thursday evening. If you believe it, shout amen. Something is about to change for me. Hey, you can say it also. Something is about to change for me. Kando brade gazoga talaba. I have enough rest in my spirit that it is done. 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 Hey, sando ze brade gazagata. It is done. It is done. It is done. Divine health is mine. Say it. Hey, divine health is mine. Say it. P 
this is mine. Say it. Divine provision is mine. Say something crazy in the air. And begin by before the year ends. Kendos abala dega sobra degas. I feel a miracle is going to happen that is not subject to time, space, qualifications, because somebody this evening has entered into rest. Somebody this evening has chosen to believe as one which has believed. It is done. It is done. It is done. What if symptoms persist? Some people say, seek medical advice. No. Seek heavenly counsel. Continue in the faith if symptoms persist. Continue ye in the faith. Continue ye in the faith. Continue ye in the faith. This is the victory that overcomes the world even our faith. This is the victory. I have believed that I'm rich. I have believed that I'm healthy. I have believed that I'm progressive. I don't know who I'm talking to. I was dealing the other day with a parent whose child was in ICU and the kid was in coma. So I meet the parent. And you know what the parent tells me? They tell me, Apostle Grace, my kid is in coma, but I know that I know that I know that I know that my kid is awake. So thank God with me. I say, this is faith. And surely as the Lord is, the kid woke up. Because they were rested. But it is hard. It is hard when your own kid is on in ICU. It is hard when your child is there, when your wife or husband is there, when your family member is there. Those you love, you see their life is living and there's nothing in the world you can do. And God still says, no. Rest. Fast rest. Don't lose sleep. Wake up in the night and not weep. And just thank me. Because I did it. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. That is why some of us who have tried this thing, we can gladly sing, Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word. Just to rest upon his promise. Just to know that said the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved you all Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, all for grace to trust Him. Let's get to our feet. Look at what Jesus has done or what God has done by Christ and enter your place of rest and know that it is finished. This job you want, it's there. You already have children. I'm talking to the barren. The Bible says, single ye barren. For your children shall be more than that which had children before. 
you're married. You must see it. Your debt is paid. You must see it. Your house is finished. You must see it. The contract is signed. You must see it. The project is awarded to you. You must see it. Fanano Cathedral is finished. You must see it. Fully paid. You must see it. <laughs> hey. Hey. Come on, let's raise our hands and speak to Jesus. Your mercy never fails me All my days Have been held in your hand From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will see All the goodness of God Again. I love your voice. I love your voice. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. In the case of time, you were close like no other. I know you as a father. I know you as a friend. Of God, oh, 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 oh. oh my life, you have been faithful. Oh my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will see. Was my cross you bore that I could leave in the freedom you died for? And now my life is yours, and I will sing of your goodness forevermore.
as you are speaking I felt I need to have a relationship with that Jesus you're talking about come and I pray with you you're saying I want to be born again I want to give my life to Jesus come and I pray with you 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 you say I want to be born again today I want him to change my life I want to inherit eternal life because he shed his blood for your sins and was raised for your glory. Come. Where are the liver, liver? Let her be. Demons are fleeing today. Demons are fleeing today. <laughs> the devil is in trouble. The devil is in trouble. Come, come. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. Come. Come. Worthy is your name, for Jesus for what he's doing this evening.
manifest Arua, we see you. Manifest Kulu, we see you. Kashombra de Gaza. Manifest Soroti, we see you. I think it is raining in Soroti. You see their umbrellas. But they've come to receive Jesus. Kashombra de Gaza. Manifest Gaza, we see you. Manifest Masaka, we see you. Jesus. Manifest smile and we see you. Worthy is your name. Manifest smile and we see you. Manifest in table, we see you. Manifest in table, we see you. Mara, we see you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now listen to me. This is the best decision you can ever make for your life. You know why these people are clapping? It's because it's the one decision we have not regretted. It's the one decision we have not regretted. God is going to change your lives for good. And I'm so blessed, so blessed that you've done it here. Repeat these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for the message that I've had today. By that message, I have believed that you died for my sins and you were raised for my glory. Today, I receive you as my personal Lord and Savior. I am born again. I know you'll change me. You'll transform me. You will use me. Amen. Put up your hands and I pray for you. I want to release the anointing. Heavenly Father, I thank you. Because you are filling these people and baptizing them with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. In fact, some of you right now, your mouth is opening and God is giving you the grace of speaking in tongues. Some of God is going to use you. I feel an anointing falling on somebody this evening. Power of the Holy Ghost. God is going to use you. God delivers you. God sets you free. God reveals himself to you. God is going to do mighty things in your life. Witchcraft leaves. Sorcery leaves. Death leaves. Struggle leaves, sickness leaves. Brother in the chair, God heals you in the name of Jesus Christ. And from today, you'll walk free in Jesus' name. Give the Lord a man of praise. So I'm going to ask for only two minutes of your time. Two. I prepared chairs, chairs there for you. A pastor is going to meet you and talk to you. Well, I want to take your names and numbers because I want to be praying for you. The best gift you can give yourself, best gift, keep coming to church. Keep coming to the presence of God. On Sunday, we have service 9 to 11, the first service. Second service is 11 to 1. I prefer you in the 11, in the 11 to 1 because it's, it, I have more time with you, okay? I'll see you on Sunday in Jesus' name. The rest of you, see you Sunday and next week. Carry one person on Thursday, one like this. One and say, I'm going with somebody. Carry one person. Who's going to do that? Put up your hands. I pray that may God give you the grace. And may you share in the blessing that I receive on this altar in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. See you. My beloved, the most beautiful and a thousand, a thousand. My beloved, the most beautiful Broadcast was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information about the great work of God, visit us on the web at www.fenero.org or download the Fenero app today and enjoy sermons, daily devotionals, and timely updates. The Fenero app, available on both Google Play and Apple App Store. You may also email us at info at
www.ghanaspeaks.org. Follow us on social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The Narrow. Make Manners.